Шановні освітяни, укотре ви маєте можливість обирати, за якими підручниками навчатимуться ваші учні. Конкурс підручників уже розпочато, і невдовзі ви обиратимете навчально-методичне забезпечення для своєї школи. Видавнича група «Основа» цього року працює над чотирма підручниками, зокрема, з англійської мови. Пропонуємо вам дізнатися більше про цей підручник та оцінити його. Результати експертного оцінювання чекаємо вже на початку березня. Якщо наш підручник буде рекомендовано Міністерством освіти та науки України, ви зможете за нього проголосувати. Автори підручника – фахівці практики, які мають багаторічний досвід викладання англійської мови не лише в Україні, а й за кордоном. Підручник побудовано з урахуванням часу, який передбачено для проведення семестрового контролю за аудіювання, говоріння, читання та письма. Акцент зроблено на реалізації компетентнісно орієнтованого підходу до навчання. Підручник цілком самодостатній. Потреби у використанні будь-яких додаткових матеріалів немає. Усі матеріали автентичні та сучасні, адаптовані відповідно до рівня вимог чинної програми з британських джерел – преси, радіо, інтернет-блогів, рекламних та інших оголошень. Виконання більшості завдань підручника передбачає застосування компетентнісного підходу, критичний аналіз певної проблеми, обговорення її в парі, групі або команді пошук розв'язання проблеми та обґрунтування своєї точки зору. Онлайн-підтримка, яка надає можливість завантажити аудіододаток до підручника, а також виконувати тренувальні вправи та експрес-перевірку навчальних досягнень учнів у режимі онлайн. Інтерактивний додаток – це онлайн-тести за матеріалами підручника видавничої групи «Основа». Усі матеріали невдовзі буде розміщено на сайті bookosnova.com.ua у відкритому доступі. Онлайн-тести доповнюють можливість перевірки знань у...
Okay, please let us know if you if you can hear us well. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, uh, let's go on. So, the difference between the two terms, competence and competency. Uh, we're going to talk about competence. That means that what people can do, the ability of doing something. And uh, we do mean not the natural ability of doing something, but the acquired ability and the ability which is based on the acquired knowledge and skills. Okay. Let's revise a few competences out of the many that are advised for um, teaching the language. But what the things that we think are important here well, are the following. The first one is the critical, the crucial one for any person in the world, and it's a bit of philosophy, because it's the main problem of philosophy to answer the question, what am I? And what am I for? And this necessarily uh, means that a person must identify where he or she is in the world, where he or she is in the country, where he or she is in the classroom. And this means that the person must be able to set the goals and to set the ways how to attain the goals. The cultural competence is something that is extremely important for teaching the language because uh, we teach the language by comparing two cultures. And that is why a person must be able to understand what his or her culture is, what the peculiarities of uh, this culture are, and uh, what the differences or what uh, similarities they can, uh, they can identify between their own home culture and the culture of a uh, foreign background or a foreign country or a foreign state. And uh, as well as being able to identify the specific features of uh, science, religion, and the family values in the world. One more important thing is uh, the cognitive competence and learning competence. That is the thing our kids are in school for. And the idea is that they should be able to uh, realize the learning process, the process of learning, uh, the cognitive process, by being able to set the goals, to plan, to analyze, to reflect on the things uh, and to self-assess, that's absolutely important, to be able to assess themselves, not to wait for assessment from some other people, but to self-assess first. The nowadays world uh, is the world of modern technologies, computer technologies, and uh, a lot of information, and that is why we must be able to handle all those uh, that, that amount of information that we and our students uh, come across. And that means a certain uh, amount of media literacy and information literacy. In short, that means that we have to be able to be able ourselves and to teach our students to make them be able to do anything about information, to look for information, to sort the information, to select the information, to analyze it, to organize it, to transform the information in the way that they need, and to save or share it. That's absolutely important and absolutely critical nowadays. The next one is communicative competence, and it is in the wider sense than uh, something that we normally uh, take into consideration when talking about language teaching. That does not necessarily mean uh, communication only in the foreign language. That means interacting with uh, everyone surrounding us, interacting with our close people or distant people, interacting in a variety of languages, both home, both native language and foreign languages as well. 
And this means, in a lower se in a narrower sense, I would say, it means that it is the ability to work uh, not alone, but being a part of a group or a team to perform a certain task to attain a certain goal. And in this respect, it is very important to be able to take various social roles in the group. The roles of a leader, the roles of facilitator, the roles of performer, and this stuff. And in this respect, of course, we as language teachers must be uh, concentrating on the idea of using foreign languages for that. The, mm, I would say that the previous one is an integral part of social competence because uh, this goes to a wider sense of taking any and carrying out roles in a society. Uh, in a wider society, I mean, well, we may be citizens, we may be observers, we may be representatives of something. In a smaller society, in a neighboring society, we may be uh, consumers or manufacturers, or we may be family members, we may be uh, brothers, sisters, siblings, whatsoever. But the idea is that the students must be able to perform various roles in the society. And the last, but not least, maybe the most important one, as important as the first one, the value and self sense competence, is the competence of self-perfection. Because it is absolutely necessary that their students uh, get the idea that they must be perfecting themselves through all their lifespan. And it does not necessarily mean to develop physically or intellectually. That means uh, to develop emotionally as well. And to be able to study, study, and study. Because all our life is absolutely... Uh, well, is a continuous process of study. Well, now that we have spoken about uh, some general competencies, well, what's the difference about the traditional approach and uh, the competence approach? What is the difference? What do we uh, have to look at differently while teaching? And I would really appreciate if you gave your ideas uh, typing via comments. So what's the idea? The traditional approach, what is it? The competence approach, what is it? Well, I see there is no sound. That's a problem. Not ours. I wonder. Uh, I wonder where the problem came from. Well, anyway, if you can hear me, that's okay. If you cannot hear me, just look at the table and uh, let's and see if you can understand what's going on. So the difference between the two approaches. First of all, the idea that the approach is different in the world, what we are teaching. The traditionally, we taught skills and knowledge about the language. So, like, for example, how to use present perfect continuous, how to make present perfect continuous, how, what, what auxiliary verbs, what forms it has, and this stuff. The difference between uh, this approach and the approach uh, based on competences is that the uh, idea is that we uh, teach our students to use that language, to use the skills that they acquire uh, to perform some concrete communication actions. And that means that they should be able to do something. They should be able to perform something. And the main result is not I know what, but I know how to do it. It does not necessarily mean uh, uh, that it, uh, it boils down just to learning some situations or whatever. Uh, the idea is that the students do not necessarily uh, learn how to use a concrete grammar structure or to use some vocabulary. Because they uh, normally, uh, what, what we do, what we currently do, we take some uh, unit of a textbook, 
which is dedicated to some problem, to some situation. And we learn the vocabulary and we learn some grammar and we read texts, we listen to something, we write something and that's okay. But the idea is what kind of production has a learning process? Is it production or reproduction? Normally more of reproduction if it is about the traditional approach. The uh, competence-based approach is based more on production rather than reproduction. And in this respect, the teacher uh, is not the dominant component of the lesson. The teacher becomes whatsoever, but not the leader of the class, the facilitator, the organizer, whatsoever, but not the leader. And the assessment is done differently. It's not that they, the end of the unit, we perform a test and we assess the test and uh, that's it. We give the points, we give the grades. The, but the idea of competence-based approach is the complex assessment of achievements is done constantly. Every lesson and the student is aware of their progress or of their regress or whatsoever. So the movement. Uh, thanks for, for the comment. Uh, there is a lot of literature on competence-based approach, actually. What I'm talking about uh, is kind of summary, uh, because normally the idea of competence-based approach uh, has been in uh, operation since, I would say, 1980s in the world. Uh, it is uh, reflected in the common European framework of reference, and no, I think you know this book. And uh, a lot of uh, people uh, overseas dealt with this problem. Uh, unfortunately, our Ukrainian scientists have just started working on this problem, trying to identify the skills, the approaches, and uh, what we are currently doing now, we're trying together to define the approaches, you and me, wh what to do, how to work with it, how to change our um, attitudes to it, how to change our approaches. Uh, the idea is, uh, have a look, that the traditional approaches normally works from uh, first acquiring some knowledge and skills, as we said, like present perfect continuous, that's okay. We know how to build it. We know how to make sentences about it. We know in what situations uh, you can use it. And uh, that normally brings very little motivation because students don't know uh, what they're doing that for. In the competence-based approach, the idea is absolutely different. This is very important and I would like you to pay attention to it. Uh, the real-life problem is first set. And the students have to solve the problem by using the language, by acquiring some necessary knowledge and skills in the area. And that is why the idea is we're teaching how to, how to ask questions, how to uh, make a phone call, how to write a letter, an application, how to write different kinds of letters, application letters, letters of complaint, and this stuff. And this is done through concrete real-life situations. Uh, well, uh, answering your comments. Well, I'll tell a little bit about my book because uh, that's not the idea of our webinar. Telling about the book, that's not an advertising campaign. Uh, I, will, I will use our book as an example of how to do that. Uh, what about listening one more time? Uh, all the video recordings are available soon so you will be able to download it and to watch it and to re to listen to it and that's okay well so and the most uh, efficient way how to do that is to appeal to the student's personality uh that means to interest the student personally how can we do that to appeal to the per uh, person's experience uh, how to appeal to a person's background, the person's opinions, values and beliefs. And this is very important in this respect, that we may not uh, impose our opinion on the students. Students may be, have the right to have their own opinion. And uh, our idea as language teachers is to uh, make them 
produce their opinion, to share their opinion, to discuss their opinion, and if uh, their opinion does not correspond to what we normally think, that's okay. How can we do that? By developing critical thinking. That's critical, that's very important in the process of competence-based approach because we put the accent, we move the accent to the student and we have the student analyze the information, compare the information. We are talking about comparing cultures, first of all. Contrast the information if they have uh, some contrast, be able to identify those contrasts. Support the idea or reject uh, the idea of others and what's very important to reason their point of view. Not to say, I, 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 this is like that, no, I think this is like that, because I know this and I can provide some proof of that. Oh, the next thing is the concrete example. How can we provide this in a real classroom? And here I will be based on our textbook, but before that, uh, let's do a blitz contest. The question uh, I'll put you a question and the, the person who first answers the questions in the comments gets a prize. And the question is very simple. Please, have a look. Which of the teaching aims? And I am looking forward to your replies because the first person to answer will be okay. So the first person and the first Miss Anastasia Slobodan, so you are the winner and uh, have a look. Why is it correct? Because we are aiming our students at achieving some practical, very practical goals to, to solve real life, practical real life situations. And um, while planning our study, while planning our lesson, we first must put uh, at the very beginning the practical aim, what activities our students will be able to perform. Will they be able to perform a phone call? Will they be able to perform uh, a survey? Will, be, uh, will they be able to perform a dialogue between a customer and a shop assistant and the staff? You see? And all other aims all, all will be subject to the practical aim because here you can see that for achieving the goal, we must be able to understand what language knowledge, what language skills, in what areas will those students be able, to, uh, will, we, will we need to be able to perform those activities, and what competences and skills what must be developed for that, and what personal traits, what personal features must students develop to achieve the goal. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm prompted that the first one uh, to answer was Ludmila Abashnik, and you get a copy of our textbook for the eighth grade of secondary school. So, congratulations! Thank you. And I see that practically all the uh, respondents uh, answered practical. That's great because it, it, it shows that we share the same ideas. Okay, let's some practical things. So a few recommendations, practical recommendations. Uh, the cognitive processes that we uh, use for learning should be taken into considerations. And uh, the three basic steps of learning. So previous knowledge, activating the previous knowledge and activate in the present content. To structure the knowledge and to apply the knowledge. Okay? And now have a look at the, uh, so this is the example, you asked about the book, so this is the example, this is one of the lessons from the uh, ninth, uh, textbook for the ninth grade, uh, and it is, as you see, it is uh, dedicated to protecting the environment. Uh, and this is the reading lesson, so lesson about reading. What do we do? So have a look, we try to put the real life context, real life, so what is, and this is relevant to learners, because protecting the environment uh, in a wider sense, uh, the global sense, and in the sense of their uh, immediate surroundings is very important to them. And that is why the tasks must be challenging for students. 
not the language related, but challenging. Those students must be challenged to, to solve this, the, uh, the test, to solve the problem. And what do we do for that? Have a look. So, by the very beginning, the, the title of the lesson, beta letter, okay, we uh, subconsciously give the idea of what it is going to be about. And we set by that the meaningful context. And uh, uh, we warm up in a meaningful context because there, there may be a variety of those. Uh, we, we've chosen that, so the rhyming uh, thing. And uh, that will be challenging for students because making a four-line verse is not that difficult, but it requires some skill, it requires some practice, and requires some, uh, what is more important, it requires some discussion, uh, interaction, and uh, communication. Then we go on, and we try to develop critical thinking by the, from the very beginning. Uh, so, have a look at the task. How can you sort? Uh, that means that students must be uh, very analytical in that because sorting out something in categories requires analytical thinking, comparing something to something, contrasting, and this stuff. And again, we imply uh, the uh, interaction, the communicative approach, and the communicative competence because uh, those should be discussed. Those should be uh, agreed on. And uh, we set up the area for the meaningful research. So, the research in the contest. Well, uh, well the question, do you have literature and grammar for a No, unfortunately not, but we are planning on doing later uh, textbooks for 10th and 11th grades, if, if that's okay. Uh, the next one is actually a sh very short piece of reading. And we appeal to personal background, we pro uh, appeal to personal experience and values, and using the knowledge uh, acquired at the previous lessons. And again, we encourage critical thinking. Uh, how do we do that? You, you can do it easily in your classroom by just asking a simple question, like, do you agree or disagree with that? Why do you think so? How does it correspond? Like, something like that. And it does not necessarily mean to be um, to have uh, our textbook. It can be done with other textbooks as well. Uh, but I do recommend that we use it because uh, it's already here. Uh, the next one, uh, have a see that we create the situations <coughs> uh, that require students work not alone but in a team, as part of a team or a group or something, uh, and that enhances interaction. Uh, wh wherever possible, pair, group, team, whole class activity, discussion, uh, whatever, let them exchange opinions, or let them argue, let them debate, uh, but sure, the, that should be organized. And uh, uh, then we move on from our immediate neighborhood, from our immediate environment to some uh, global categories, uh, showing the idea of developing, showing that we, uh, this is all a part of some global thing. And in this respect, it is uh, very important because uh, the world is being globalized day from day. Uh, and that's uh, something very important to talk about and to let our students understand. Then uh, a longer text, as you see, I, I remind you that the lesson is about reading. Uh, and uh, it is very important to give real-life examples, real-life teaching materials, something that is adequate, something that is not invented, but something that really exists. Uh, you may see, not well, I believe, but the text is about the uh, current issue of littering in Britain and how Britain um, handles the problem. And uh, the next uh, task is comparing uh, the ideas, comparing the things that we can uh, see in the British Isles with the things that we can see in Ukraine. And uh, what should be done about that? Can we use the experience of Britain? Or can we just uh, think of some, uh, some our own experience or 
can we offer something maybe to share our experience with the British people? So that's the idea. And again, we appeal to personal background because our students live in various surroundings. Uh, some live in uh, penthouses, some live in the slums. And that's why they have very different experience about their personal uh, neighborhood, personal attitude to the problem. Uh, the cross-cultural approach, Ukraine versus Britain. Uh, maybe Ukraine versus the United States, maybe Ukraine versus Europe, that's okay. And it is based, as you see, on the real-life statistics of facts that uh, provoke some critical thinking and discussion. Because something that you always say, do you agree or do you disagree, why? That's the key idea of competence-based approach. Uh, and the final task, uh, and a summative task for the lesson, is uh, encouraging setting goals because uh, here we talk about the again we get back to the students immediate neighborhood uh, from global to local uh, but not just um, uh, local as it, uh, as it is but local as part of some bigger process and uh, you see the problem of littering in your neighborhood like a part of a global, global problem, like part of a problem in Ukraine, in Britain, and the world as well. And uh, you set the goals. Well, what, what is being done to, sell the, uh, to s uh, handle, to solve the problem? Is anything being done? Who is responsible for that? So you, you make a brief description and you set the goals. To how to do that? How to do something? And uh, you have to search for information, that's information competence, independent research, uh, analyze and do this uh, something with that, share and uh, process information and this stuff. Uh, and again, again, critical thinking, critical thinking and interaction, there are key things for that. One more thing uh, that, that is very, very important for uh, learning in a competence-based classroom. So autonomous learning by giving some strategies, some active roles to students, not the teacher but to students. And here are some sample learning strategies that can be very helpful in this respect. Not all of them, of course, but some of them may be helpful. And the last but not least, uh, the teacher's role, as I already said, is more than a leader. So the teacher steps aside and lets the students learn. And uh, we remember that uh, every student has uh, their own pace, has their own motivation, has their own abilities, uh, and every student learns differently. And every student learns the way they, they feel most comfortable. And our role is to provide those comfortable learning, to provide the motivation for that. And uh, the, the, the last thing about it is the assessment. Uh, we all know that our students are afraid of assessing, of being assessed, right? Uh, and the, our task is to make assessment an integral part of the learning process. So we do not assess uh, something of, but we assess something for, for learning. So what mistakes, okay, mistakes are okay, all of us make mistakes. And that means that uh, in this respect we use those mistakes, we use those uh, uh, assessment tasks not for criticizing, not for evaluating the student, but rather for motivating the student for further learning. And uh, this is done very easily if we uh, have them assess themselves or we consider peer assessment when they assess the works of each other because that is, I would say, not so that dramatical as the teacher assesses. All right, thanks. Our time is almost finished. And uh, if you have more questions, uh, if you have more comments, uh, here is uh, the schedule for the webinars on this topic that's going to take place about until the 19th of April. You may register easily, they're free. And uh, if you have further questions or comments, please feel free to call the phone or to write to us. Thanks. It was very nice talking to you.
very nice. Thank you and hope to see you soon.